How are we going to do five states? We're doing this or that. Introduce it. All right. Here we go. Hey, guys. Welcome. You guys Did- also have to come up with some then. Because I can't be the only Shut one Shut up for two seconds. Go ahead. Did you hit record on that? Yes. Okay. All right, guys, welcome back to the Raised Hunting Podcast. And if you like the fact that Warren and Easton are here again, and David is here as well, and the fact that you may hear some arguing during the family discussion, you're going to love today because we have been arguing nonstop for 30 minutes prior to this. So I don't know how much Nick was recording, but he might have actually picked up some of it. But it is... uh, Kind of an interesting topic. We'll get to that in just a second. The first thing we've got to do is our housekeeping. So, Warren, do you have some shout-outs that you need to do first? Uh, Just a few. Jake DeLee, David Harrison, and then God's General 9924. He beat all of his brothers this week. He wasn't happy with us this week. Why? I disagree with you, too. (laughs) He said he disagrees with both of us. He explained it all on there. Rightfully so. But I'm just telling him I disagree with him, too. Disagreed on what? It was the last week's podcast, the, oh. the uh, food plot stuff. That's it? I guess we just posted it yesterday. Uh, yeah, this is our issue with recording. I don't right even after. know. I don't even know if it truly got posted yet because <laughs> when I saw it on there, it was unlisted. Nick? And posted. What? It's posted because Warren went in and changed it to public. <laughs> well, it was listed as scheduled, so... Well, at 11.30 on Tuesday night, it was still not... Uh, yeah. So, it's okay. I changed it for you. All right. So, and I, I guess that's all Warren's got for today, so... Yeah, we're a little behind. Gotcha. Okay, I'm going to talk about Nick Knott, bottom left. Nick Knott. You want me to point at it or not? No, I'm just telling you. Because last time that I did that, you yelled at me because... The last time I said the name and didn't hint anywhere of where it was at. Hmm, which one is it? Whatever. (laughs) Okay. We've got two after this. And one of them has been patiently waiting on his. Because he's talked to me about (laughs) it. (laughs) And the other one I don't think cares. But those two will be our last two together. Today's is Nicholas Knott. He said, I wanted to say, listening to the podcast has definitely helped me while in the woods. I messaged Warren when I picked up a new property this year and didn't know where to begin. He gave me some great advice, and I put that to use right away. Getting inventory with the raised hunting buck junkie in my mock scrape I made as well. I was able to get multiple bucks on camera, hitting my scrape and my rub tree. I waited to strike until I had the right wind, and it all came together with me harvesting my biggest buck to date at 19 yards. I appreciate everything you guys do and the products you make. Definitely a believer. I made multiple mock scrapes on four different Indiana farms, all using your scents, and it worked like a charm. I do have a picture to submit as well, but I can't seem to figure out how to attach it. Well, have no fear, I got it. Uh, if you could email me and send it that way, thanks again. I That's got it. That's cool. From yeah. Nicholas Knott. Well, nice job, deer, Nick. too. Yeah, it was a good deer. Really good deer. Yeah, it's because you're using the right products, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. Crushed right placement. Good job. Yeah, he did smoke him. Good job. All right. That's the only one you're going to do today? Gonna yeah, hold the other two, we're gonna, I'm going to do them together, together at the end. Even after they talk to you? What do you mean? You said that one of them told you about uh, yeah. or that they're waiting, so now you're just <laughs> doing that just to be a Well, his is really long, so I want to do it the last. We're down to like, there's only two left, so the one is kind of short and his is long, so I'm going to do it all together. Okay. 10-4. All right. Well, then I guess it's time to introduce this topic, and um, we've been discuss- We've gone back and forth. I'll just let- give you guys a little insight. Warren wanted to do this or that. Is that correct? I wanted to do something that was fun. Something and that you had to pick. Nobody of any of us had any decent topics for 27 minutes. So we all sat here like bumps on a pickle. That's not true. We were all, we close. came up with a lot of stuff. And every time we've decided, Warren has changed his mind. So today we are deciding I to go it. with Let's do yours this, too. Or see, he's changed his mind again already. We're going to go with this or that. I'm not entirely sure what that pertains to, but you guys can go ahead and write in the comments, was this topic worth it or was it not? 
because here at Raised Hunting, we are a democracy, and you guys matter. So I'm curious Which to my, see. Everybody has loved the wacky facts. Nobody's disliked him ever. We you you have self, disliked like 42%. You're self-conscious of your wacky facts. No, I'm just glad to see that you now see that you're the only one that thinks they're not good. I haven't changed anything. I still keep your numbers, and I still vote yes or no. <laughs> so your democracy has not worked. <laughs> to you. To everybody else. All right. Does. Warren is going to present our first this or that, so we have an example as to what to go off of here. Okay. So the first one, you have a 1,000 acres. <laughs> Nobody else can hunt it. 1,000 acres, prime stuff. Okay. Best stuff ever. But you can only shoot six and a half yards or you get 200 acres of half decent stuff with two or three other people hunting it and you can shoot 50 60 yards but you have to use a crossbow no i'm doing the six and a half yards not be- <laughs> not, not because of the crossbow <laughs> i know that oh yeah off. no seriously sure i have had the mediocre places where there's a couple guys and it never stays that way. So no, I am not dealing with it. If I've got the opportunity to have a thousand acres where nobody can touch it, I'm doing it. How are you getting them to six and a half yards? I'll figure that out later. Have you ever shot a deer at six and a half yards? Hershey. How far was he? Six. Six? So you had six inches to spare. I did. It was the first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh actually God. kind of a compliment on my end, <laughs> saying that I don't have any to spare. <laughs> okay, so what was the second closest you've ever had? A deer? Yeah. A shot? Uh, oh, I've had an 11 and a 12. My my 10, that 10 that's in there, I think, was uh, 12 yards. Um. Okay. I'm trying to think. There was a couple that I had real close. Back longer ago, like when me and dad were always hunting when I was little. So, so far you'd have killed one deer. Yeah. Okay. What do you take in? Well, I first want to go on record and say how stupid this is. That that six and a half yards is... It is an excessive amount. Because I already feel like what you're asking... We already do. We just don't do it to the same magnitude. No, 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 no. That's that's the whole point of the game is it's cut and dry. So six and a half yards. I, without a doubt, I'm taking the six and a half yards, hunt a better place. No doubt. Because I feel like I would do exactly – I already shoot less distance than most people. I, I don't shoot very far. My average well, shot you're distance You're just going to be adapting to whatever you're – That's it. You're, I mean, and so I just so now what do you? So what are you going to do different then to try to get them to six and a half yards? Probably nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah. I probably would not change anything that I already – I'm already shooting average distance on whitetails is like 12 yards. You don't think that you'd be putting your stand closer to the scrape? Nope. Or how many deer have you I, shot I at would. six and a half? I, I mean, think of the. I'd be putting, me too. My, I'd be <laughs> putting my rub post <laughs> on the I bottom of the tree. My tree stand would be the rub post. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be drilling a hole into the bottom of my tree to put a rub post <laughs> in. Yeah, my, my food plot would be the size of this cup. So that he's standing right there. You want to know? You know oh, what? I can't say on, it because I know Jinx it. Which, but. The wide 10 was six yeah. or less. Mm-hmm. Who oh, else? No, I've shot him. Uh, I base dropped the first time that I had, should have had a shot at him was underneath my stand. That was okay. like one or two yards. Okay. Um, Juice, the first time I that he came by that I when I got it, didn't get a shot at him was four or five yards. I mean, he walked right by, but he kept going. Um, but so, so I've had opportunities where I, they've been that close. I've not closed the distance. I don't, I, and I intentionally, I think we all would say we intentionally don't set up for a six yard shot because that's not, that's too close. I don't want them that close because my, my favorite distance is 12 to 17 yards. I've said that forever. And that is because then they're far enough away that you can still move and draw and they're not paying them as much attention, but How yet. Far? 12 to 17. I just love that yeah, distance. Yeah, I think like 17 to 20. See, I don't uh, – I like even 12 yards is fine. I think – I just like them under 30. B- yeah, I don't I – don't, I'm not – G was six. Bullwinkle was six. I'm trying to think if there been any other of my deer that were six yards or less. 20, 21 buck. Uh, oh, he was six. 
So I've had at least three of mine. The one I shot with you, the horse, that deer was like, I should, I could have shot him at like six. Yeah, I shot him at like 15. thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, are, you have one. I'm close. Okay, I got well, another try, one. Wait, trying to hold make on. it. I think we should discuss that a little more there because I do think that because why are we all pick, so? Are you saying you'd pick the same? Um. Oh yeah. You. I mean, you wouldn't take a mediocre place and say no. you could shoot whatever distance you wanted to. For sure, but I also. Well, because you also have to use a crossbow. You got to keep in mind on that, that part of the that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you even needed to add that. It would that wouldn't have changed <laughs> my perception at all. Well, the other thing I think you got to think about though is, you got to think of how painful this is going to be. What did I say? A thousand acres or fifteen hundred acres? A thousand acres. A thousand acres. Think of how many big, big deer you're going to have. That are going to be at twenty yards. And you can't shoot them. We already have that happen more than the average person. Not 20 yards broadside, you know, hitting a scrape right. or rubbing a tree or doing whatever. And you can't and you can't shoot that far. I don't know. I, I mean, Nothing. I just think that it. But we have a lot of deer already at 30. Or, I mean, I passed a, a lot of shots at 30 to 40 yards. Yeah, but Where I just could, didn't a, feel like they were comfortable. You never had a 180 with double drops at nine yards. And just because I have a 1,000 acres doesn't mean I'm going to see one of them anyhow. Probably lots. No, you're not. You don't know yeah, that. they're going to be all over the place. <laughs> Especially because you, you're never, not going to kill one very often because you only shoot six yards. <laughs> Unless you got buck junkie on the bottom of your tree. Right. Then you're probably okay. All right, here's the next one. Here's So you can either, you can hunt every year. But you can never shoot a deer over 133, or you can hunt every five years, and you'll have a deer to hunt that's at least 175 or better. Every year. I, I'm already in that boat. <laughs> <laughs> Living it. <laughs> so you're going to hunt every year, but... I'm not taking breaks. Are you kidding me? No. 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 What about you? I think I know what you're. I think I I know this one. You didn't clarify on deer either. I'm going to go shoot 133 inch coos deer every year. <laughs> I'm going to have a world record. <laughs> no, I I would be in the same boat. I'm I'm hunting every year. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would have guessed you just said the five years in a 175 or better. Believe it or not, I've actually I think I've reached that point in my eight in my age or my hunting career or whatever where the size is not doesn't matter as much as it used to um used to it was like and, and i think they they we've talked about it we've done shows about it that you kind of go in a cycle you know you when you first start hunting you want to kill you want to kill something period you're willing to shoot whatever and then the next thing you want to do is you want to kill as many as possible and then you want to kill the biggest and then you want to help someone else do the same. And then it follows a pattern. And I think I'm at that place. I've, I've killed some big deer. I, I haven't killed a 180 or bigger. So I haven't killed a 200. Um, and I think that maybe there was at one time, maybe that was a goal. A 200. A 200, you know. But um, considering I've never hunted one, I don't. I honestly don't believe that I, we've ever had the opportunity. I don't. I know you think Ralph was two hundred. I don't think he was. I think he was big. Dude, basic math says he was. Well, basic math says you also. I think thought that Bullwinkle was somewhat bigger than he was. One ninety. Yeah, but that ain't two hundred. I didn't think he was two hundred. Well, so anyhow, so but my point 190 is one ninety big was big enough for me, especially then. Um, should be now. You still haven't killed one. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> We're going to remeasure it and see about that. You better be careful. It's going to be smaller now. I'll Dry stop time. if it's looking that way. Yeah. So my point would be is that um, it's just a number. I enjoy hunting, and, and um, I miss those days of here comes a big deer. Uh, I mean, I love the fact that we run trail cameras and I know the deer and I have a good idea because then when I do see one of them, I recognize him and I know that's a shooter. But there's also something to be said for sitting in a stand and not knowing. What do you and here, mean for you miss those days? I miss those. I'm, there was, I spent a whole lot more years sitting in a tree stand having no clue what was coming 
And I think back about that sometimes and I'm like, man, that those days were fun because when you saw a deer, your freaking heart was pounding, you know, because you didn't know how big he was until he got in there. And so, and then I think too, it didn't take as big a deer because you didn't know. I mean, and so you were excited, shoot. I mean, if it gets you excited, gets an arrow. And I thought I, uh, I love how dad's taking this all serious and it's a game, but it's good. I, I would, I thought you would have taken the five years for guaranteed that you could hunt a 175 or better. I have one. And it's uh hold on, he has to answer his own question. <clears throat> I don't you're an idiot. Why? You're taking the five year. Well, I didn't specify if I could hunt with other people. Yeah, well, that's I'm a technically loophole. not hunting. You're I'm trying sitting. to play loopholes. I was gonna say now he starts to add loopholes to his own game. So then plus hopefully Alyssa doesn't listen to this. That's about her ratio every five years. So I figured I could help her for four years, and then I can shoot a big deer, and then offer her another four. Years. Dude, you'd be divorced so fast <laughs> if you actually committed your hunting season to uh, four years straight. You would be done. You right. would quit hunting. No, we'd kill one eventually. We'd kill a couple. It would just take a lot of work. I don't think you'd want to hang in there. I wouldn't. Well, that, she's got herself a good one. Then never thought I'd say it. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe this one's gonna hit really close to home because that might have to be the case here soon, Mister Liss. Either you're gonna have to kill him, or we're, or I'm taking her. We're going. Somebody's got to commit on that to deer him this year. I don't know what else. To, I mean, I did everything I could last year to put an arrow. I no. So gonna, here's the deal. You guys can say you're welcome or thank you. Thank Why? you, both of you, because of the food. Well, block. whatever one of you, I have a feeling it's gonna be Alyssa, just because that's how things tend to be. He's a but. She's Dad the only is person hunt that he'll show up for. It seems like. I'm just telling you right now, he's going to be a lot easier to hunt this year. Because did we put beans or corn down there? Beans. But there is think there is a total easier, of though. 10 acres of food on that spot now versus zero or maybe an acre. And then 10. Yeah. We've got five. He's talking about rolls. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not talking over at the 80. I was like, I was thinking even... at the 80, though, he had like two acres at most. Yeah, okay. And he goes from there and back and forth. All right, I'm with he's you. He's hanging out now, and he's old as crap. I'm with you now. Yeah, well, I, I'd, I think well, he, I be, think it, he's going to be nine. It'll be interesting to see if he's alive this year. I th- I may have gotten a video of him the other day. I, I have the one idea. He'll, actually, I said it the other day. He'll be the one that you guys end up killing uh, at the water hole I just put in, the grizzly one. I, possible, I'm just calling it. But you're – you. You're also on the. He doesn't understand that that where all that food is is on the very fringe of his core area. Yep, but he comes and hangs out there for a couple days. Why is he doing that? Well, during the during the rut, I mean, yeah, he's coming to check it out, right? Yeah, he's going to check does. There's another one that does the same thing to the same property, but he leaves. This all this is going to do is bring more deer into the area. To hang out there, so why would they leave until they've run out of does? Because they're going to have more there and less pressure there than they would in the other places. I hope you're right. I wonder if you'll see him do one of those deals too, where he kind of his home range gets a little bit smaller because he's so freaking old. I really, we have to kill him because I think I really think he's nine. I think he's gonna be nine. Well, here's old. the other. I had that in one of my things, but I don't know what I'm supposed to ask about it. Is the deer that deserves to de- that? Not the deer, the deer that, that deserves, deserves to, die. to die. No, the deer that deserves to live. Do you shoot him? Like no. Like there's a part of every if if you've hunted a deer long enough and he's gotten to be old enough and you've had enough encounters with him, there is a question that comes into your mind of has he won and does he deserve to live the rest of his life? Because Mr. Liss, shit. in my opinion, Wait, Bullwinkle walk by. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't had the like you had a long time with him, but you didn't like. Mr. Liss has been shot at many times by twice by Alyssa. He's been N- shot. Yeah, not including however many times he's probably been shot at by other whoever else. I don't think so. Patch too. And he's destroyed. Patch never been shot at though, but I thought they shot him with a muzzleloader. Oh, so yeah, supposedly neighbors did. Yeah. 
and he's good. <laughs> yeah, and he's point just being, fine. Point being, Mr. List has got some kind of omen or something that is keeping stuff from killing him. All these so shit does bucks, he dude, not are earned like it yet? just ironclad, man. They just take bullets and spit them out. I'm telling you, I feel like he's almost earned the right to just, let's just Let him watch walk. him live the last year of his, what's probably going to be the last year of his life. Do you think it's a better way for him to go out, though? Depends on how he goes out. So, yes and no. Is, I don't see how. I think if he could get old enough and he dies peacefully, which probably doesn't happen very often in the wild animal world, that would be great. But if not, really... he's going to get coyote or he's going to die because he gets sick. Or right. Do they really even die of just old age? Oh, I think yeah, do. animals can. Do I they have cardiac arrest? Well, I think they just start to not digest food as well and... And then a small injury becomes infected, and they die from disease. Or they can't replenish something, like regrow maybe stuff. We should, maybe we should start putting, like, salt from McDonald's on the beans or something, and that'll just... Give them cholesterol? Clock, yeah. <laughs> get high cholesterol, <laughs> and you will have a heart attack and die. <laughs> Dude, that is so dark. What? How? I'm saying it's just like people. You're just assisting him. Stay on Warren's good side. Okay, it, a heart I, attack would be a faster way for him to die than just than an arrow than going starving or something. No, if you're trying to let him die of natural causes, that's not dying of natural causes. <laughs> well, kind of. No, it's meaning not. it's not. There's there's you're no object it. that <laughs> is going what? through his body cavity. <laughs> but you put the object there. So you're saying McDonald's poisons us? Pretty much. That well, they've done a study where that dude ate McDonald's for like 30 days or whatever, and he was like Hannah deathly was just sick. Tell me about that. I thought he lost weight. No, no, he got really sick. He was royally screwed up. <laughs> like, what? like really like, bad. Like, um, went in, in the, the hospital. Yeah, he had for to go in the hospital days. and everything from just all the grease and couldn't digest uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I stuff. mean, it was like he almost didn't make it after thirty <laughs> days of. That's all he ate, though. Nothing else. Strictly yeah, breakfast, McDonald's lunch, and dinner for you know breakfast, so you, lunch. It could kill him. Yeah, that's how wow. I'm saying it. it ain't natural. But so, what did that guy have? Like, it just I don't know. clotted all his arteries. You'd and have stuff, to look it what? up. I, it's been so many years ago that it, when he did that, I mean, it was just a guy that did a personal study thing, wanted to see how the what the effects would be of strictly eating fast food. But he picked McDonald's, I guess, and started eating it nonstop, and just said that's all he would eat, and see what happens. And it put him in the hospital. And it put him in the hospital. How, what about all those? I feel like there's a lot of people that pray eat McDonald's every day, though. Not exclusively like this guy. I mean, like he wouldn't drink. I don't think he was drinking water. Just anything else. Yeah, just you know, seeing how, if you could survive on it. No thanks. Interesting. Okay, I have one, a real one though. It's kind of two good things though. Two good things. Like you got to pick between better or better. You have. There's no states here because I don't know. I'm kind of making this up because I don't know where you'd have both calibers of these animals together, but. You have, uh, or I guess of the caliber I'm thinking of, a thousand acres where you have large white tails and mule deer, okay? But it's a thousand acres, you have it, and you can only rifle hunt it or compound. Not that fancy, whatever. Or you could have 10,000 acres with world class mule deer and world class white tails, but you can only use a recurve and. You are not allowed to use calls, scents, stands, blinds, any of decoys, any of the things that we use to aid ourselves besides your weapon and camo. Number two. For show. He just won't go Indian. <laughs> That's the only reason he went that way. Did you say in Nebraska? No. I, oh. just, I said I don't know where you'd find this. Because, I just like, have a history there's... of animals running around with my arrows in them in Nebraska yeah, from a recurve. <laughs> But wait, Two you're turkeys. saying you're going with number two? The 10,000 acres? It's a recurve. I know. Only. I know. So you're just going to have all your animals running around with arrows in them? Well, I'm saying... I was referring to when I shot those two turkeys in Nebraska, and they were all running around with but arrows. But I was confused why you used that as an example well, for I'm the a, one that's recurve only. Because it was with a recurve that I shot them, and the arrows were sticking out of them. Okay. So you're taking the, that one, even though you can't use a stand or, like... Yeah, I'm just going to have to get better at be shooting fun. my recurve. Oh, world-class mule deer in 10,000 acres. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I almost did elk, but I knew that would be too easy. What's the, you got to repeat the first part. The of first that. one was only you have 1,000 acres with very big de- Like, when I say large deer, I'm saying, like, large whitetails, like 170s and 80s on average. 
and then you have big mule deer as well. So what's whatever the equip like one nineties and two hundreds on average for mule deer, and they're all roaming in the same area. And I should have done. You could only use a rifle. That would have made it more difficult on you guys. But you already didn't pick that one on the it anyways. But yeah, I said rifle, I was only a rifle or compound. Okay. Or you could go have 10,000 10, acres where you have literally world-class mule deer and whitetails, like, like huge. So in my opinion, you just – that world-class is the first one as well. I mean, those are big. No, it's big. But you can use anything you want as far as hunting. Right. You're going to kill them. You're going to have good opportunities. Or you can go to the 10,000 acres where you can only use a recurve, so dwindle your shot distance down, and you can't use anything to assist you whatsoever. So you can't bring anything to you. You can't be using food. You can't use water holes that you've put in or something. Stands, blinds, calls. Right, I get it. You got to put camo on your back and a recurve, and that's the only thing you got. I'm going with number one. And and the I, reason I would go with number one you is can't be, draw a recurve. Is I, I'm, <laughs> I'm at that point where I can't shoot. I never could. Even when I was younger, I tried it, and I couldn't hit nothing with it, and so I wouldn't feel – like it was fair to go out there and shoot at them, and but assuming you were good at it, well, I'm not. So I'm not assuming I'm, you no. freaking peck terrible head. at this game. No, you I'm are. You have to live game. within the means. I am living within the means, and those are world He's class animals. Gave you me. good means, so we're gonna pretend that you can shoot a recurve confidently. I'm at still going yards. with number one. I'm All still right. going okay, number why one. Why now then? Huh? Why on that? Because, like I said, to me, those are world-class animals he described there. I mean, it's yes, it's a 1,000 acres, but I've worked hard to learn what I've learned about hunting deer. So you want and, to be able to use your tactics. And I want to be able to use and, – and that, to me, is part of the chess game. You know, it's not just about killing them or just about having a whole bunch of land. It's about being able to manipulate things. I mean, I love calling. I don't do it every time. I haven't killed all my deer by calling them in, but I love doing it. The rub trees, we started using rub trees, what, four years ago? Mm -hmm. And I've killed two deer now at the rub trees or had the opportunity to kill two and killed one. And that, to me, regardless of how big that deer was, meant more because all of the pieces of the chess game went my way. I mean, I played chess and I won. So fair enough. That's why I would pick that way. What about you? I hadn't even thought about my answer. Uh, I'm going with the ten thousand acres because I'm going to have fun running around chasing them. Um, really? I kind of figured you'd go number one because you like your sense and stuff. I do, but I also like being able to move. Yeah. Like, or I guess uh, you can do that in both. But I I like the idea of having. It's not about the size. It's about I have so much land there that I don't have to worry about freaking screwing up my property. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I busted the deer. <laughs> it went over to the 10 miles that way. I'm still good. <laughs> you'd, probably, you'd probably still end up with him right on the flipping corner of oh, you yeah, and I the would. neighbors. I would. All the time. But I, a thousand acres is big, too. Yeah, but I'm telling you right now that if I screw with them enough, because that's all I'm going to do is hunt, there's not going to be any animals on that place because I'm going to try wacky things because I only have one option. So I'm going to yep. screw stuff up. So 10,000 acres gives me the most margin for error. Then it's just like ping pong. Yeah, it's ping, just, okay, ping, he went ping, that ping, way. Ping, now ping, I'm ping. just going to get in my truck, <laughs> drive around to the other side, and approach him from a different way, and hopefully he doesn't notice me this time. Do you have one? No, I don't I, 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 have, have, I had another one. Oh, I have the most classic one ever, but go ahead. This one is kind of interesting. You have two, like each one has the same amount of land. Okay, it's, it's a thousand acres and a thousand acres. The difference between the two. In land lot number A, or letter A, <laughs> is you have had people over the past however long, like 20, 30 years, tell you you've seen pictures and stuff where you just bought this and you know that there is some significantly large deer. Whether that's 160s to 180s to 200s or wherever you're at, it's large Could be for 130. you. Okay, yep. So 130, whatever's big for you, okay? You can at least prove that this 1,000 acres produces some good deer, okay? Lot B, you can take 1,000 acres, and the way you look at it, you don't know anybody, you don't know any information on this, but the way you look at it is this looks like 
a flip property, basically. Like a property that I think, oh, it's got potential, but I'm going to have to put a lot of work into it. I'm going to have to try to get some food and fields in there. Um, I'm going to have to try to cut some stuff down so I've got some openings or whatever. I'm going to have to do a lot of work on this one, but the potential I see in this one could be ungodly. Like it could be freaking huge deer if, <clears> I, if, if I'm right, if my gut tells me I'm right. More so potential you than the other one? Way more. Okay. I'm saying like your gut is telling you like this could be the best hunting you've ever seen in your life. So are you taking the guaranteed lot A that is whatever's big for you, that you know has at least been there, but there's no, you can't do the stuff that you could do to the other one. So it's just naturally hunting their, What's their the funnels size of each? in there. They're both a thousand acres. Okay. And the one is you're not, you can't manipulate anything like that, but you know that there's good deer and everything. Mm-hmm. The other one is you can do anything you want to the property, but you have no idea what, what deer are really there. Okay. I don't mind. I think I know yours too. Go ahead. I'm thinking so you can answer. I'm taking the first one. I don't You're taking do the easy work. stuff. I knew you would. <laughs> I knew you would. And I <laughs> and I like to hunt deer where they're at, so I don't really need to That's fair. manipulate them. So that one was pretty easy. I'm torn on it. I, I really can see am you being torn because on I it. enjoy the the. W- I need something to do all the time. I don't sit still well. So having that amount of stuff to do would be like okay. I've always got something on my list to do. But number two would also be. I think that I would do stuff like half of it I'm going to go ham on. I'm going to cut fields in. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put that in. And then the other half I'm going to leave it and, like, run tests. Like, do I think that doing all this crap of work, did it make this half ten times better or did it not do anything? It's you know? the A-B test. Kind of. Yeah, I don't think they're going to let you do that but this, before you, <laughs> you buy one, though. No, I'm saying I'd buy it for that purpose. Right. But I don't know because I'm not to the stage where I've killed tons and tons of big deer. So you kind of would logically be sitting there being dumb not to take the guaranteed good deer. <laughs> I think it's because you enjoy the trying to manipulate it more than the just but shooting I'm, one. I'm I do enjoy. I I'm starting to learn. I think that I'm more in the dad side of trying to kind of push them where they want to go, versus or encourage say. them to go where they want to go versus. Hunting that well, the past five years, that's all I've done is hunted them where they're at and yeah, get but in. We're on also them talking stuff. about somebody who planted a food plot with 87 cows on the place. They weren't supposed to be in there at that time. Yeah, well, well, have you seen the fences around there? Yeah, well, <laughs> I had hope. All right, I'm ready to answer now. Okay, I'm going with the one that I don't know, and and the reason is because I've already done that. I mean, you look at the house when we bought it, there was no um. It didn't come with a whole bunch. I, I talked to the landowner who was kind of a hunter, but not a didn't have a whole bunch of trail camera pictures. It wasn't like what it is now where you get this huge history with a farm. Typically, they're giving you picture after picture of 2020, 2019. Here's the bucks we killed. Here's the ones that are alive. I, I've, I've lived through that. So the same with the 80. I mean, I did not get a I, I knew nothing that came from a card in a mailbox. And it was go look at it and play your gut. And I feel like it was a good deal. You know, I mean, it worked out very well. So I think that you, there's something to be said for not having all that info. Um, that was a powerful hiccup. It hurt. <laughs> My eyes are watering. Um, like I, I think, <laughs> I think that's, that just shows you that honestly, I'm listening to that and I'm like, this is a, this shows the difference of where we've come in 10, 15 years. You know, like as a society that we are expecting to have as much information right at our fingertips where it used to. We didn't have that. So you had to kind of You've pick. always had the word of mouth, though. That's what I'm referring to. I'm saying, like, you knew guys that have hunted that place for 20, 30, 40 years that could tell you. You I knew coming into here, though, talking to neighbors, that what we're seeing right now that we think is insane is not as good as it was 10 years ago. Because yeah, they could tell you that. But I didn't know that any yeah, of we it. we drove around the block one time, and we were all like, oh, my God. And like, yeah, oh, but, this is but my point is, is we didn't talk to a single neighbor prior to buying. We went with what we – I mean, now, granted, when I looked for the house, there was more factors in it. I'm looking for a house and everything with some acres. And so there was a lot of things that played into it. But when I walked the property that day, I had a pretty good idea this is the right place. 
and that was I didn't see like a whole bunch of big rubs. I I didn't walk through the guy's yard or, or like go in his garage and he has all these racks hanging in there. You know, he wasn't telling me there's you know we've killed 160 inch deer every year, 180 inch deer. Didn't have any of that information to go off of. What I went off of was aerial map of the basically looking at where it was that there was lots of timber around. I did know that the, there was a large landowner next door. I had no idea whether he let people hunt or not people, but it was one big contiguous piece of ground. Um, I knew that what I was looking at laid well, you know, or it seemed to. Um, there was lots of cover. There was lots of food around, which has changed in the last 10 years. Um, some neighbors have taken their food out, which kind of has hurt us. But at the time, it was... I, I mean, I feel like we made a pretty good decision, you know, mm-hmm. um, without without having that knowledge. So I was just defending <clears throat> not technology. I don't care about technology. Like they can hand you 17 different trail camera photos of what's alive and what's not. I'm talking about you can a lot of times you can trust what people you, you got to be careful, but you can trust what the farmers that have lived there for 50 years can oh, tell yeah. you on it and stuff. So that's what I'm saying. You got good information. Whether it's technologically driven or not. Ready for the next one? Yes, the classic. I, I have one. Oh, this is good. What's yours? I, mine is more of a real scenario because I think that it means more, but it's not on whitetail deer. And mine would be you have over the ridge, you can hear bulls bugling, several of them. And, I mean, like it's a bugle fest going on. However, you're looking at half a mile away across an opening – you can see a bull with eight or ten cows. Looks like a pretty good bull, but you're far enough away, you can't tell for sure how big he is. And another bull that's skirting him that also looks to be roughly the same size. So you have a perfect opportunity, in my opinion, to go after the one that is over there with just a few cows and a satellite bull that might be a shooter as well. Or you can dump over this drainage. and I mean, this is like going... And you, you, we've heard it before, so you guys will know what I'm talking about. But something to the effect of sounds like 15, 20 different bulls over this drainage going absolutely like ape the, shit. The day and so Jason and everybody. do you go over the ridge and go after them? Wind is, per, wind is exactly the same for both scenarios. I have a question that will help me answer. Am I hunting alone or do I have, like, do I have my partner? You're by yourself. Okay, that answers my question. I'm going to the long ones, the ones further away. Why? Because I have more confidence in myself being able to call a single in versus trying to entice a crap load of them or one of them to leave all the others. So I'm going with, I'm going over there because <laughs> I don't have enough experience to, to deal with 15 bulls. Is this like a timbered bull or like open or what is it's Whatever the... you want it to be. You just can't see anything of what you hear in going on and but you can see these others oh i'm going over the i'm going over the ridge you're it going would, to it the, would be everything to in me not to go yeah. just to see it and experience it but if I, i'm i'm in the boat of like i'm really trying to kill an elk i'm going over there but do you think that if you screw one up in the frenzy you're probably okay because there's that only 14. that assumes that I can get one to separate from all of them to come well, to it's one little nice calf. and timbered and the wind's good. You can get right in the middle of the of the friends. Look, man, I'm just going off of the absolute mayhem that we had the one day in oh, New Mexico. You got to get in it, for and sure. it was taking you and was it you and Dad or you and Brad both going ham on the calls to even get one to quite questionably come over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so no, I'm good. I have not hunted elk that much to know how to, how to handle that alone. What are you taking? I'm going to the far ones, and that's come from experience because it's— So that's f- probably what you should do then, people, it's, if you're listening. It's, it's fun to go over the hill and get into all those elk, but I can tell you more than once, I can even give you a scenario you guys were in when you hiked over in on the, um, the monster, and all those elk, and you guys had a hell of a time trying to get one to come within range. Yes. I mean, it was hundreds— and same thing, now we had the opportunity for the first time when you were little and you, I had you holding the decoy and got one to come away from the herd. That's, the, that's what I was thinking of is that kind of thing. But that distant scenario that we're talking about there is prime. You have your, your opportunity is way high when you have 
he's defending that herd and there's a satellite bull harassing him and the satellite bull looks like to be a good bull, you got a hell of an opportunity here to go close the deal. I feel like you could have a chance at both of them over there possibly if he's that pissy about it. Absolutely. Him. But the, the what I would say, this is something that people could learn if you're listening for elk. The thing that runs through my head with the issue with number one being alone and number two going towards all the elk is watching you guys and listening to you guys when we went to New Mexico. The number one thing that I kept hearing you guys say when we were dealing with a massive group was the only option you have to really like give yourself a shot is you got to get close you get in, them. in their grill so they it, you're not just a bull on the outskirts. And the reason that that is scary for me is because I've listened to probably hundreds of seminars by a guy of the name of David Holder on elk calling, and the number one thing you don't do is call and move forward. So if you are alone, that's the only way you can really try to you got to call and move a little bit or try to be able to back up or whatever you need to do. You ain't going to be able to do that properly with one person to go into a big herd. I think it would be way easier if it was a really timbered bull or something because then they at least have to come look or you and could, check it out somewhat. You could also run the, the, the guess of, okay, right now they're hanging out, but we know that they're probably going that direction. If they're not leaving yet, you could just go sit over there and wait. It would just but, be fun to go get in them. It, 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 yeah, I could see that. But, I, yeah, if I knew the satellite bull was really, really big, yeah, I'd probably go there. <laughs> but I'd need to know that. Right. Okay, what's your class? Wait, what would you – oh, yeah, you said you're going over there. This yeah. is this is a, the question that started this whole thing, I think, that every, every dude has had to answer this at some point. Oh, boy. The real question is, should we do the North American version first or global? North American. Yeah. North American. Okay. Well, I think the North American one's not as fun. You have to get attacked by one. Oh. <laughs> We've been Which one are you Warren taking? played so many of these <laughs> in the tree stand. A mountain lion? One. Or a grizzly? One and one. What do you mean? Like a single and a single? Yeah, you're not getting attacked by both at the same time. No, I'm saying it's not like a pair of lions. No, just okay. one individual. Taking the grizzly. Over the lion? 100%. You're stupid. Now, um, now. Why? Well, because a mountain lion, if it is attacking me, it's because it's hunting me and wants to kill me, to eat me. A bear, there is a chance there that he is just pissy or she is just pissy. You didn't say anything about cubs or anything, so I can sit there and play dead or get up a tree. A mountain lion, there's nothing to do. You're not you going to beat get him. up a tree. You have to then I'm playing dead. confront with them. No, I'm playing dead. Or I'll, try, or if I got a knife or something, I'll try to stab him in the eye or something. I'm taking my odds on a grizzly over a mountain lion. Yeah, but the mountain no lion way. is only maybe 130 pounds. It doesn't matter. You might actually be able to stab that one to death. No, you can't. A grizzly is going to be four or no. 500 pounds of just... Get me a grizzly and get me a mountain lion. We'll go at him at the same time and see who's right. I'm... Well, there's been a dude that's choked a mountain lion to death. I've never heard of no, a grizzly he hasn't. getting choked to death. It was a grizzly. No, it wasn't. In Wyoming. The dude in Colorado. He jumped on the grizzly's back and grabbed his no. ear and cranked it. That's not the one. I showed you it. I that is choking this, a grizzly bear out. No, this dude literally choked, killed a lion. Okay. With it, choked it out with his bare hands. Yeah, but we have two examples here. Though That, that grizzly did not die, though. It he doesn't was just matter. like, what he the frick is wrong with you guys? It got him to leave his buddy. <laughs> that is so freaking hilarious that this kid did <laughs> for any, that. For anybody that's listening, we were informed. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a true story. I can't give you like all the, the details team. on how it's true, but we know it's true and it's been for clarified. A yes. <laughs> that a couple buddies that were wrestlers in high school, I thought, or was they college? They were in college. In Wyoming. <laughs> thought it was a good idea while they were in the mountains, to piss a bear off. Because a grizzly bear. A grizzly bear. They and picked- the grizzly bear had, according to the, the spectator, had already done its thing. They had, they had seen each it other and everything, and him. it bluffed them. And the grizzly bear left, is like leaving. They and threw rocks at him. They throw the freaking rocks at him. <laughs> what do you know? It attacks him. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> who would have guessed it? It's attacking the one kid. And again, from the spectator's view, all he sees is his buddy run up, (laughs) 
jumps on the grizzly's bear back, grizzly bear's back, puts it in a headlock and grabs the opposite ear with this with his hand and starts cranking his grizzly bear's head and gets him off of his buddy. And his buddy runs, they, he jumps off, and the bear runs off. Dude, that's They're the most both good. loyal friend. That is freaking Ever. awesome. The dumbest situation you put yourself in. <laughs> but very cool outcome. Very cool outcome. Unbelievably lucky, in my opinion. They, they had, <laughs> so I think there's a lot of there's a lot of questions you Go have ahead, to get ask. into the variables. That's fine. You know that because okay, what's the first one? Well, the first off, I guess I'm, I'll just first answer the question because I'm He's answering got both. I've I've run into them, and but my thought is exact opposite of what he. I picked the same thing that Easton picks, but I'm picking it for a different reason. I'm picking the grizzly because I'm pretty sure he's just going to kill me. It's just over, and where and it's going to be faster, and it's going to be faster, <laughs> and I'm done. Where I've seen how mountain lions, first of all, they don't kill quickly. They grab something's throat. And hold on and then take their back feet and run their back mm. feet down the body until the entrails come out. And I've, like, I've, yeah. I've seen this being done and I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> you know, oh, why, I, really? you know, I'd <laughs> rather have a bear that is able to crack my whole skull and clamp down and that's it. I don't know anything else. What if he doesn't, though? I do, what if like the dude in Ennis and he just rips yeah. off half your face? Well, that's what I'm saying. There's a whole bunch of variables. I don't know the size of the bear, size of the lion. 470 because, because and 150. 470 and 150. That's a lot in perspective. That is a very large cat and not that big of a grizzly. That's a decent-sized grizzly. That's a decent-sized grizzly. 470 is a, a pretty big, big grizzly. Inland grizzly. A cat that is 150. It's a pretty big cat. pretty big cat. It's not huge. It's the same. It's equivalent. No. No. Yeah, it is. Like a 500-plus-pound okay. grizzly. Then, Compared to like a 150, 160 pound mountain lion, male, no. and male. They only thought the beast was like 650 or something. Only, oh, right? yeah, that's my point. That's a yeah, freaking the beast massive is, bear. The beast is like a like a 230 inch deer. Yeah, I'm saying 500 plus. That's 600 plus. Yeah, that one's just even bigger, bigger. Okay, that All one right. would be a good one to fight because now, then you I can't would get around. With... He's gonna roll everywhere. I'm taking the, be- the beast. <laughs> yeah. Beast is killing you. Oh, yeah. He'd yeah. probably just sit on you and you'd die. Yeah, I think you'd fit in his mouth. That thing's humongous. Uh, I'm taking the lion. I've watched enough Joe Rogan. I think I can choke it out. Whatever. You do realize that I'm 90% gonna pull a in and <laughs> everything that, that he is sucker. probably talking about is imagined through shrooms. Okay? <laughs> so that is not a reliable source as to what to pick. I'm taking that lion. Now, if it was a gorilla and a grizzly... That's I'm a, not definitely even taking the grizzly because I don't know. I want to want to know how a gorilla would kill you. You ever thought about that? I know what they do Smash first. Smash yourself. I mean, just grab. Have, and and let me go to this story. So there's a guy named Barry. What kind of story do you have to relate to gorillas? Because he wrestled one. <laughs> what? He got, he got in a he with a chimp. He and Barry was Barry Fincher is his name, and I, I'm sure he won't care that I'm telling this story. But Who, he was he a with? he was a game warden. Um, in Georgia, and he was a pro staffer for Primos when I was a pro staffer. <laughs> okay. Is so, he retired now? Yeah, he's okay. been retired for quite a so while. We're not going to ruin this man's career. <laughs> oh, he'll, he tells the story to everyone. I mean, like, it was well known. I, I believe that it was while he was at an ATA convention, and they went out, and someone dared him to. They had this thing where you could fight the chimp or something like that for, you know. A real chimp? Yeah. Not animal the, the, This here. chimp was in there. And so anyhow, the this. chimp probably loved it. Yeah. Like just choking people out. Yeah, loved it. No, he was like, the, he, the, and I won't tell the story correctly because I just remember parts of it, but like what prompted Barry, Barry's a big guy. Barry's probably 6'3 at least, 225 to 240. So, I mean, he is a big man, not fat. And so anyhow, people dared him. You go, you go, go, go fight the chimp. And so, and I think all you had to do was like <laughs> make it for this, a like, minute or something like that. And, but one of the things that he was like, what does that mean? What does make it for a minute? I mean? don't know. Like, I don't know how you, I, I can't remember. Like not tap out. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if you had to get him down on the ground, you know, or something like that or whatever. But the way Barry described this, he said, it's like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. Now you got to remember he has a jaw. And he said, all the chimp did was reach out and grab my arm. And he said, I've never been grabbed so hard in my, I mean, he just grabbed his arm and it was like, 
what the hell's got a hold of me? Like he, there's, you couldn't get away. You couldn't do anything. He was just holding on to him. At the, in the meantime, someone had tossed a cigarette and the chimp picked up the cigarette and ate it. <laughs> <laughs> and just friggin' ate the, I mean, like this chimp is just hanging out, doing whatever he's doing. And Good people are God. trying to do whatever. So my point would be is that the strength of, uh, where, where it, is this that you could just go? It was in Vegas, I believe. That makes sense. Yeah, at that, that was time. not a chimp. Yes, it was. It was somebody dressed up as no, because <laughs> there's no way they were as strong as what he talked about. Yeah, it was like he was like it was unbelievable. All I want, he said, all I thought about then was get out. I just need to get out of this thing before he kills me. Do they make you sign something? That oh says yeah, that, yeah. That he that, kills you. Yeah, or break something. You know, I mean, this was back there. It used to be you could fight a bear. They'd have a bear with it. You could get in a. Yeah, they had all kinds of shit like that. Hey, I look. have a picture next to, um, was it Brutus? The big, oh, the, the bear that came between, to, yeah, but that that was just getting your nice. picture taken. Yeah, there's a difference yeah. between a picture and fight the and bear. And conveniently, there was about a one-inch thick plexiglass right between me and him. Right. Yeah. But I, it wasn't enclosed. He was still sitting right there. <laughs> I don't know that all these animal, like, the animals were winning every time, you know, um, but at well, the I same time. Imagine. But at the same time, it was... People were wanted to see it, and then so it didn't last very long because it was cruel. Suppose supposedly cruel to the, the to the animals. I don't know. It might have been more cruel to the people. <laughs> the ones it, that we actually keep that had, for punishment. Wasn't it in Vegas too, where the dude got killed by the tigers? Yeah, well, he didn't get killed. Like he, he oh, that was that was uh, sure Siegfried, Siegfried and Roy. Sig- yeah, and he got attacked by his own tiger. Yeah, that was an act, and it didn't kill him. No, didn't kill him. It was an act gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like that was an act like they're tigers. Well, that I mean, the only person that should be having tigers is Mike Tyson. He did. He had for 12, 11, 12 years. I think I just he's probably the only person that could keep him in check. Yo, is the Hangover? <laughs> is that actually his tiger? I don't know if it's those if those were. His, he doesn't have he them anymore. Two. I know that. Yeah, but that was a while ago. Right. I don't know if those that'd be were so his. cool to be hired onto a movie with my pet tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine okay. having a pet tiger. I don't know. Well, it is. We've done a. I don't know. You guys tell us. You're either not going to get to this point or you are. Everybody's got to answer it for themselves. Uh, well, sure we're going to have long comments on this one, which is fine. We'll read them all. But I got to go plant, so we got to wrap this up. Okay. We'll plant. You ready for your wacky fact? Uh, that was not nice. That was Christo. Whatever. What the heck? Okay. In the 1830s, American physician Dr. John Cook Bennett sold tomato ketchup as a medicine to treat ailments like diarrhea, indigestion, and jaundice. I did not. <laughs> and that is an awful prescription. Ketchup. Ketchup. I would have been in the 1830s. More. That doesn't Why? make sense. That is an awful fact because I really don't give a crap about it, but I didn't know it. So It just seems like ketchup is really acidic. Yeah, I feel like that'd make it worse. Yeah, you, I would think, but I, but I have no idea what the well. He was a doctor in the medicinal the purposes There's of no ketchup. Way he knew that much. Yeah, I mean, it, you're <laughs> the eight, 1800s is a long time ago. I'm joking. They're still probably a lot smarter than I am. Um, doctors, see, man. I thought I had there was, there was another one here. Oh, oh yeah. Competitive art used to be an Olympic sport. Okay, that makes me angry. Competitive art yeah. meaning what? Yes. See who you can paint the best. Something. Yes. And that is. Well, then I guess the curling's not so uncool, huh? Curling is stupid too. <laughs> no, not according to painting. That I mean, is the dumbest thing I think I've ever heard. It's wacky. I am a fan of art. Like I have nothing wrong with art. It is not a freaking sport. An Olympics. Nor sport. is it should be in the Olympics. Our competitions formed part of the modern Olympic Games during its early years from 1912 to 1948. The competitions were part of the original intention of the Olympic movement's founder, Pierre de Frede Baron de Corbonton. Medals were awarded for works of art inspired by sport, divided into five categories, architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture. I don't know how to judge that one because it actually does make me a little angry. It's wacky. I guess. Um, not. Isn't know. baseball not in the Olympics? Yeah, they pulled it for a long time. Yeah, so you're gonna 
You're going to tell me baseball, which freaking lots of countries play, yet art? Maybe that's why they removed it. Good. I'm glad they did. And it better never come back. I think I'm going to start petition a petition for it to come back. That was weird. Just because it'll piss you off. I was going to sign a petition <laughs> to make it not come back. I know. That's why I'm going to start one for it. Vote for mine. Or yeah. I'll enroll to be the arter, artist. The and I'll go get the gold medal and really I like it's off. gonna be the arter. I like art. I already I already saw my Christmas gift for this year. Your Christmas gift? Oh yeah, you did. Wait, to, to last yourself? year. No, for last no, year. From you guys. You hear me? I walked I in uh at your house the other day and I was like, When'd you guys get that painting? That's a really cool one. And mom says, Oh, oh. shit. Oh, painting. And so you're like, talking about this Christmas, actual Christmas. Yeah. That's like a long, what, why is like, she just now getting you that? You're the one that bid on it. It's for next Christmas. Yeah, I know. Why is she getting that so early? I don't know, because they, they both we, got we it. We were somewhere, I, re, I remember something about it. I didn't know if it was for you or for him. <clears throat> no, it was for me, because well, I'm the one that likes the wildlife art. I do too, I just don't have the money to buy them. And then she was, <laughs> and she was like, well, at least I know that you're going to like it. I was like, well, I feel like you should just give it to me now. So it's six months in advance if I already know, but whatever. It's fine. Gotcha. I'll probably forget by the All right. anyways. Well, I'm going to go plant food plots that I spoke on last week that are useless. Let's hope they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and several of you have commented the fact that he's wrong. Food plots are worth it. And he better hope they are because he got a lot of hours into this year's food plots. I think I think food plots are worth it depending on these are fields. your definition. These are fields. These are not food plots. Right. So, all right. Well, we're going to get out of here from the Raised Hunting crew. We sure appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next week.